Hello product friends! Welcome to my channel Untrapping Product Teams. I have a question for you. Should product managers approve developers output? Many people ask me, should I do that or should I trust the team? Because sometimes I trust them and they surprise me in a negative way. So that's what we're going to explore here. And what am I talking about specifically? That famous column in Jira that's called PM approval or maybe PO approval. It doesn't matter the title you have. You know, it's responsibility from end to end. And the question is, do you need to sign off everything developers do inside the sprint so that can be called as done? Let's explore the two scenarios here. The first scenario is you are signing off everything. So during the sprint, developers will do their work and their magic behind the curtains and so on. Uh, everything is going to happen. They do their code reviews and install and so on and browser testing and whatever inside the definition of that. But then there's the magic column PM approval and you're going to look there and see if the feature is good enough in your eyes, if the acceptance criteria are met and if so, you just drag and drop to done. You are the only person in the team who can approve. Developers rely on you to ensure the work is good enough to go live. So you are the one signing off at the end of the day. What do you get by doing that? You get a team of doers. They will do what you want them to do, but they are not achievers and you are the boss. You become the boss, either you want to accept or not. You are validating the work of them. You are the last person in the team to accept the work and qualify that as done. The team become doer. You became the boss. That's it, my friend. Would you like to be the boss? Yeah, then sign off everything and you became the boss. However, as I know, Scrum or whatever framework you use has no hierarchy. You're not here. You're not here also, but we're here. Same level as a team. But once you decide to do this, hmm, it seems that you decided to be the boss. So that's what happens when you start signing off. But why do you do that? Just reflect. I used to do that, I will tell you. Many times in my life I was signing off. And the reason was simple. I didn't really trust the work of developers. I am a developer myself and I want to validate if the feature would meet my expectations. And then I would challenge here, challenge there, return the ticket because I didn't approve and someone would need to pick that and work further. But I realized that I am not an end user, right? It would be better to ask the end user if it works in their eyes. I was missing this question. But by missing this question, I spent a lot of time with work inside the sprint and I was not doing what I am supposed to do, measure the result of the output created. I was not talking to any user, I was not measuring the outcome. I was evaluating the output. So just think about it. Now let's go to the other scenario. You, as a product manager, do not need to approve anything. Everything developers create will be presented during the sprint review and you will decide either to continue working on that or not. And you will decide if you can go live or not. And what happens in this case? Let's say developers did something you think it's not good enough. Maybe they didn't meet the acceptance criteria you agreed upon. Maybe the sprint goal was not reached. What do you do in this case? You could have avoided all of this by signing off. No, you don't want a team of doers, you want a team of achievers. You will give them feedback and say, here, we agreed upon doing this, about reaching this goal. How do you think we would reach this goal by what you created? A how question will open for a conversation and they will reflect. And next time they can do better. You want to empower them to make decisions if the work is good enough. You want them to be achievers, not doers. And then, after that, what do you do? You decide to either go live or continue working on that. Let's say you decide to go live. You know what I learned from that? I talked already. I'm not an end user. 
What about letting the end users decide if the work is good enough or not? Because sometimes we start being judgmental and think, ah, it's not good enough, or maybe it's missing here, it's missing that, and so on and so on. But in the end of the day, we are not users, we are the ones creating value for the users. And the moment we forget this, we start behaving as if we are the end users. I think they should talk for themselves and we should collect feedback, observations and learn from that. And then we can make better decisions. So what do you think? In my humble opinion and my learnings, the best way is not to prove anything. You set the goals with the team in the beginning. And I'm not saying that we'll set the goal and disappear and not be available for the team. You can be there as a consultant if the team wants anything from you. You can provide perspective. But I would like also to warn you something. Great product managers ask more questions than give more answers. And why? An answer will shut down the conversation while a question will open for different perspectives. And you want developers to use their brain because they are creative, they know how to deliver value, they know how to solve problems. You don't want to make all the calls, you want to open for perspective. So be available for them, but not to provide answers, but to ask the right questions and help them figure out how to solve problems. Let me ask you one question. Do you want to be seen as a value maximizer or a boss? The value maximizer will point to the right direction and help the team get there, but you empower them to make decisions, while the boss will limit them and micromanage the work they do. If you're a boss, they may not like you because you are limiting their potential. And what you get as a result of a boss is a team of doers. And that what you get as a result of Value Maximizer is a team of achievers. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please write comments about your perspective. Don't forget hitting the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.